I'm in the minority of United Statesians who will watch football even if the World Cup isn't happening. There are three squads that I keep an eye on. The San Jose Earthquakes of Major League Soccer, Chivas de Guadalajara of the Mexican League, and Liverpool FC of the English Premier League. I've been an LFC fan since 2003. Probably after I watched the movie with Officer Tenpenny from Grand Theft Auto San Andreas and Rumpelstiltskin from Once Upon a Time. The final act of the film had them meeting Luna Lovegood's dad from the Harry Potter movies at a luxury box at Anfield to conduct business and watch LFC face off against Manchester United. I just wanted to point this out so I don't sound like some yank that started supporting Liverpool after Jurgen Klopp was named the club's manager in 2015. In football, the pinnacle of a very successful season would be achieving the Continental Treble that involved a club winning their country's one-and-done domestic cup tournament, finishing at the top of their top-flight leagues table, and winning their Continental Association's Champions League title. A recent reference is the year 2020 when four clubs accomplished the feat. The European club to do it was Bayern Munich of Germany, winning the DFB Pokal Cup, the Bundesliga, and the UEFA Champions League. In the 2021-22 season, Liverpool was on the verge of doing something that no professional club in the world has done before. The quadruple. It began after the Reds beat Chelsea FC in the final of the EFL Carabao Cup in a very long penalty shootout. As they ticked the first box at the end of February, they eliminated Norwich City in the fifth round of the FA Cup, knocked out Inter Milan in the Champions League round of 16, and the chase for the Premier League top spot was slowly becoming a two-horse race between the deep American pockets of Liverpool and the even deeper oil company pockets of Manchester City. Fast forward to the month of May. The possible quadruple was still in the cards. On May 3rd, LFC smashed Villarreal in the semifinal of the UCL and advanced to the final match on a 5-2 aggregate. A few days later, it began to get wobbly. Luis Diaz scored an equalizer in the 74th minute and wrangled out a draw against Tottenham. This meant that Man City were three points ahead in the league table. City showed no signs of slowing down. Their next two matches, they scored five goals each against Newcastle and Wolverhampton. While the waters were getting choppy, Liverpool ticked the second box of the quadruple. They once again faced Chelsea in a cup final match. This time, it was for the illustrious FA Cup. The two clubs once again went to a penalty shootout. The Reds downed the Blues to win their first FA Cup since 2006. The next day, in their chase for the Premier League title, West Ham United helped out, forcing a draw with Man City. You know how you really could have helped out, you hammer runts? Not blow a 2-0 advantage on these guys. Liverpool was only four points behind with the game in hand. Two days later, on May 17th, despite going down 1-0 early, the Reds got tallies from Takumi Miyamino and Joe Matip en route to a 2-1 result over Southampton. There was still hope, but a lot of things would have to fall into place going into the final day on May 22nd. Liverpool would have to at least win and get some help. It was in that final day of the season, the fates would be cruel to the Copites. Liverpool's last fixture was at Anfield against the Wolves. Man City would try to go back-to-back -back at home against Aston Villa, managed by a Liverpool legend, Steven Gerrard. There's nothing much to say about Liverpool's 3-1 win over the Wolves. As I said earlier, they needed to win that match to have any kind of hope. The Reds were two points clear. All the while at Etihad Stadium in Manchester, it was a story that would be added to the history of last match heroics in English football. This was the true match that would seal Liverpool's fate. Near the end of the first half, the packed house was stunned in the 37th minute as Aston Villa drew first blood on a Matty Cash header. Looking good so far. In the second half, in his return to the Premier League while on loan from Barcelona, former Red Philippe Coutinho would put Villa up 2-0 in the 69th minute. <laughs> 69. I'm sure Anfield was buzzing. I know I was as I repeatedly checked my phone that Sunday morning. Alright Steve, just get through the next 20 minutes or so and you will get an honorary league champions medal. No worries, it's only one from Gundogan. 
They have to get three points to win this thing. Dude, what the bloody hell are you wankers doing? Don't you know that City can erase two gold deficits like it's nothing? They did it in their last match. Come on, Steve. Millions of copites all over the world are depending on you. You are dead to me, Gerard. A few moments later. I could have put all this failure on Aston Villa blowing this match, but I didn't. It was only two points Liverpool needed to finish at the top after 38 matches. The Reds had 28 wins, 2 losses, and 8 draws. This meant that they lost out on 22 points. They could have found those points anywhere. Maybe beating Tottenham near the end of the season would have done the trick. Or not losing to Leicester City on my daughter's birthday. Maybe actually winning one of the two league matches against the team you are chasing all season. Whatever. Coulda, woulda, shoulda, right? I guess they can salvage a continental treble and it'll be all good. Nope, it was 2018 all over again as Liverpool lost another Champions League final to Real Madrid. Looks like it'll be a double for them. Now many of the Red supporters are fine with the double, but not me. If the Premier League trophy isn't claimed, it's a lost season with a couple of consolation prizes sprinkled in to give supporters the warm and fuzzies. I can always take solace knowing those two cup victories were against Chelsea FC. I think there's a song about them having no history. 